So before getting into my own video, I just want to give a long overdue shout out to my friend Bob the Science Guy. This is his channel, and I have seen him develop this from the first video into what it is today. Bob is an intelligent and articulate man, and the quality of his work is excellent. In particular, I can strongly recommend watching this one, titled FE Core and the Gyro Compass. Bob takes us through a very detailed explanation of how the gyro compass works, and that it relies on the rotation of the Earth to sense the direction of true north. Head over to Bob, you won't be sorry. In this video, we will conduct a simple experiment to confirm the existence of a pressure gradient in the atmosphere. Very early in their training, all real pilots learn that atmospheric pressure reduces with altitude, and this affects the performance of the aircraft. Generally, for a jet aircraft, it is a lot more efficient to fly at high altitudes. The engines are more efficient, they burn less fuel, and the true airspeed is a lot higher for a given indicated airspeed. We further learn that the air pressure reduces at the rate of one hectopascal per 30 feet, and that means an elevation change or an altitude change of 300 feet is going to equate to a pressure change of 10 hectopascals. And pilots further learn that this one hectopascal reduction in air pressure per 30 feet is the basic operating principle of an aircraft altimeter. If we have a look down here, it states clearly, conventional aircraft altimeters work by measuring the atmospheric pressure at the airplane's flight altitude and comparing it to a preset pressure value. When the static pressure increases or decreases, mechanical connections trigger the altimeter needle to show a corresponding altitude in feet. So if we didn't have a pressure gradient in the atmosphere, the altimeter just wouldn't work. I have actually demonstrated the existence of a pressure gradient before using the barometer in my Android phone. In this video posted more than a year ago, a simple demonstration of air pressure gradient. Now this was conducted in a hotel, riding up and down in the elevator. And apparently some flat earthers out there believe that hotels are pressurized and they wanted to see it again outdoors. So that's what you're going to see in this video. I'm currently located in Colorado, USA, staying at one of the hotels in Beaver Creek Village. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to take a ride on the Hay Meadow Express gondola. And this has a vertical rise of 102 meters, which is around 330 feet. This is Beaver Creek in Colorado, USA. It's one of our favorite holiday destinations. I don't really ski, but I love the snow and the cold weather. I'll take a ride up one of the chairlifts later and see if we can put this pressure gradient nonsense to rest. Can we have a pressure gradient without a container? Let's find out. So let's go for a ride on the gondola and we'll notice the air pressure will be increasing as we're going down the hill. So there's the phone and the Bad Elf GPS. You can see that the windows are open, which means the air pressure inside the gondola will match what's outside. And if there is a pressure gradient, we're going to see that air pressure increase.
So here we are, clearly going downhill. And let's see what happens to that air pressure. is very clearly increasing and we can see the altitude is reducing in the GPS as well. As you can see, I'm not afraid to brave the elements in the pursuit of truth and knowledge. And once again, confirming the air vents are open. You can see the air pressure has increased by about 10 hectopascals, which equates to around 300 feet. So as we saw, riding the gondola from top to bottom resulted in an air pressure change of around 10 hectopascals. So we definitely see a pressure gradient. That 10 hectopascals equates to around 300 feet vertically, and that was confirmed by the elevation change in the GPS. Now the published vertical drop for that gondola ride is 102 metres, which is just over 330 feet. So we have a 30 feet discrepancy. However, this is not a problem because any IFR pilot will tell you that the acceptable error in an IFR pressure altimeter is plus or minus 60 feet. So this 30 feet discrepancy is well within the acceptable range of accuracy for a barometric altimeter. So we have now seen evidence that a pressure gradient is very real. In fact, the operation of a barometric altimeter relies on there being a pressure gradient. If you have ever driven a car up or down a long hill, you may have felt your ears pop. That is also pressure gradient. And we're going to look at this in a future video and see why the existence of a pressure gradient can help us understand why the Earth's atmosphere does not get sucked off into space. And I'll leave you with some additional footage walking around the village. What do we have here? I think I'll just pause and take a closer look. Nah, it's barely worth a video.
That's a funny looking kangaroo. And after a busy day of debunking up on the mountain, nothing beats relaxing in front of a warm fire with a good strong coffee.